aging and disease. And our doctor Sosoka has doctorate in neurophysiology from London University and clinical side from New York. And she also published multiple articles on subject of neurophysiology, hormonal balance, fitness and health, and many more. And she also award uni international speaker in several medicine and anti-aging conference. Please welcome Dr. Sanya. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for including me in the ICAD uh, uh, family, and thank you for being here. And uh, we will be talking about uh, the shield of health. So, uh, Okay, so this is, uh, you know, we're talking about face and how we can make our face beautiful, but the whole point is, you know, at the same time, the health is everywhere, the entire body. If you're healthy in the body, your face, your beauty is going to be enhanced. And if you are unhealthy, then the opposite will occur. So there is three reasons why age occurs. Inflammation, unbalanced hormones, hormonal imbalance, and, um, well, obesity, and uh, also um, not taking care of ourselves, lifestyle. So when our body is fit and healthy, and our hormones are balanced, that increases the body intelligence. Imagine a body that is always lying back, uh, is uh, very inactive. The intelligence of that body is like the person, right? It, 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 the intelligence of that body is not gonna be up to the state of the art. But when the body is more active, then your brain, your entire body, will uh, have a much higher level of intelligence. So a healthy lifestyle prolongs life, why? Uh, do you, how many people do you know that are like 78, 80, and they're obese? Most of you don't know that many people, and probably I don't know any. Why do they die? Because obesity is one of the main causes of death, and it's one of the main causes of disease. Over 50% of deaths are from obesity related disorders. Even COVID 19. Now, do you see here? This is the obese people, that's when they get more infections and more deaths, and these are the overweight people. Why is that? Why does uh, is uh, obesity associated with COVID-19? COVID-19 has a spike protein, and that spike protein connects with the AC2 receptor of our cells. And it depends how many AC2 receptors you have in, in the cells, and, and that's, you have more chances of getting COVID-19. So COVID-19 likes fat, why? Because the fat has the most AC2 receptors. So the COVID is gonna go to the obesity uh, uh, group. It's also other aspects like the males also have uh, a greater susceptibility, again, because of the AC2 receptors. And the muscle has the least AC2 receptors. So people that are fit and they're healthy, they're far more protected. The importance of immunity is crucial. There is a, several articles on interference and also genes that are producing this interference, and people that have a higher incidence of interference and higher immunity have a much less incidence of contracting COVID-19 and also being a, having serious uh, uh, deficiencies and side effects and, and symptomatologies and so on. Now, this is a sedentary lifestyle that has inflammation, toxicity, fatigue, hunger. Why hunger? Because toxicity increases hunger. The more toxic you are, the more hormonally imbalanced you are, the more hungry you are. And fatty liver, aging, and disease. And this is now a balanced uh, hormones and healthy lifestyle person. Now, we talk about collagen. Well, IGF-1 which is something that you increase through a, a healthy lifestyle and fitness and hormonal balance increases both the bone density and muscle density and skin collagen. And there is a lot of articles that associated that IGF-1 increases collagen and increases 
increases uh, the uh, bone density. So we need help. You know, you can inject all you like uh, of collagen, but if you're not healthy, your body will reject that. So health is primary. Now, lasers and RF, uh, there is no RF frequency, uh, frequency uh, studies that can remove this cell part. There is some studies that use lasers and exercise, but you don't know if it's the exercise and the laser, and the same investigators have uh, repeated the study and could not replicate the results. So the other problem with laser and RF, it discriminately releases white fat triglycerides, glucose and toxins into the bloodstream. So basically, even if you do that, again, you're gonna need the exercise because without the exercise, if you're an older age, young people, okay, but older people, it could produce toxins that could remain in your bloodstream and clog your arteries. And of course, that will overwhelm your liver. So fatty liver cannot be healed uh, or repaired by laser or RAF or surgery. I mean, that is, should be obvious. The other thing about lasers and RF is that because they burn fat, or they cook fat in the case of RF, uh, they basically destroy the fat cells that are naturally into the adipose tissue. Whereas if you naturally release the fat contents into the bloodstream, you also release your own, your own stem cells. That is very important. Why? Because there's more stem cells in adipose tissue than anywhere else, about uh, one in 100,000 in adipose tissue versus one in 100 in bone marrow. And also, uh, st these stem cells become as a chemo stem cells that can repair the liver. Hepatocytes also, uh, they can detox and they can create a booming, they can uh, reduce the cholesterol and lipid metabolism. So these stem cells are very important. So exercise is crucial. But I know what you're saying, and it's not just you. Exercise is hard. So there is, uh, we have invented something in London University. We have done about uh, 40 studies right now in a few books. And it's a signal that goes to the brain and basically gets the brain to start getting stimulated. So it, the technology doesn't do anything, it just gives a signal, and the brain takes over it and does the rest. So recently, I published an article on non-alcoholic fatty liver patients, and uh, we looked at several uh, uh, variables, and we looked at all the variables that they looked when they're injecting mesenchymal stem cells, and they're trying to repair uh, the liver via stem cells. I'm thinking, well, maybe these stems from the adipose tissue can also have the same effect. And what we found is that everybody with uh, about 20 people with fatty liver previously, afterwards either had no fatty liver at all or significantly improved. And here are the uh, variables that were studied. Creatinine significantly decreased the 80% uh, uh, normal liver we have. People 8% liver have normal liver, about 20% significantly improved liver in ultrasonography reports. And also uh, bilirubin was uh, increased, uh, um, I'm sorry, significantly decreased. Now the, the liver enzymes, the ALP, AST, and AM, LP, they were uh, decreased by 24%, 30%, and 14% um, uh, respectively. Albumin increased. You need this albumin. That is an important aspect of liver repair. If the liver is repaired, then you need these variables to look exactly the way they look here. And this is the results that we found in this uh, new public study. This is not a muscle stimulator. Uh, muscle stimulators with repetitive usage, they actually, uh, the muscle cell dies because what it does, it depolarizes the muscle cells and with repeated depolarization, there is too much calcium in the cell trap and the, tells, uh, the cell dies. And there, uh, there's a lot of research and also a lot of articles that say how the muscle stimulators deplete adenosine triphosphate, ATP, which is the energy in the cell. There are other limitations with exercise, it takes too long. Uh, so there is, was a modest reduction of visceral fat after eight weeks of exercise. 
And the other problem is lactic acidosis increases your lactic acid and therefore there is an acidosis that comes with it. And sometimes if you have high cholesterol, you cannot exercise, why? Because it increases your, um, your cortisol. So it makes you even more stressed in the, in the end. So yes, you need to exercise and we have this other method as an alternative that increases testosterone and decreases cortisol. Here, the, with exercise, older people, again, not younger people, but older people, the 45, the 50, they, you, see, you see their testosterone going down, the cortisol goes up, because there's this inverse relationship between cortisol and testosterone. So you really want the testosterone to go up and the cortisol to go down. Now, exercise uh, increases BMR by 15%. So if you can have like 2,000 calories uh, per day, uh, like a day that you can burn, then with exercise, you're gonna burn 2,300. With this enhanced method, what we found is 91% of BMR increase. So if you can burn 2,000, 2,000 calories, you can have an additional 1,819 calories, a total of 3,800 so you can eat more. So basically you reduce stress because it reduces your cortisol. And um, these are a lot of papers that uh, have been written on how to get rid of visceral fat. And they're all based, uh, they're all published studies, and they're all based on experimental research. Um, and uh, there's more papers that uh, on different journals, again, they are based on experimental research with two groups, an experimental group and a control group. We have more articles. Um, now this is uh, from 130 subjects. This is the results that we got. Testosterone increased by 50 to point 20 percent. Cortisol decreased. Uh, visceral fat decreased ab ab about 30 percent. Overall fat also decreased. BMI decreased. BMR. BMI alone, just the decrease of BMI doesn't mean much. But within all these other variables is a significant result. Very important, skeletal mass increase, of course, are uh, very important. Blood glucose and fasting, and um, uh, both uh, fasting and postprandial also decreased significantly. And all people that were diabetic got either normal or in the pre-diabetic status. And this is uh, some more results. Uh, the uh, very low density lipoprotein like was significantly decreased. So cholesterol is reduced triglycerides were reduced, uh, HDL increased. You want the HDL to be because that's a uh, very high density. Uh, it's a very small to absorb something else. Leptin and ghrelin are very important. This is your appetite hormones. If they are in balance, this leptin is in balance, and uh, of course, the erosion and creatinine. And CRP, very important. Inflammation, remember we said aging is inflammation. So. You can get a repaired liver, and uh, you can get a reduction in the cholesterol um, that makes you feel free and light on your feet. And uh, also, here is the problem, T3, high for thyroidism and high for similar symptoms, fatigue, uh, weight fluctuations, depression, memory problems, hair loss, muscle pain, all those things can go away by basically boosting the metabolism. T3 was significantly increased. The metabolism was increased and normalized the insulin, the glucose, for hyperglycemia also had very similar symptoms like the hypothyroidism. And of course, it will increase your energy and boost your motivation. Uh, leptin and ghrelin imbalance if it's a balance, that means you have no hunger. This is your appetite hormones. And basically, that's how you can reduce a, a detoxification. Another aspect of hunger, the more toxic you are, the more hungry you are. So basically, the reason why people increase their weight, especially with age, why? Because the BMR goes down and the toxicity is increased. Because the toxicity is increased, that's how you uh, gain weight, then your hormones are in balance, then you eat more, you're more hungry, then you put on more weight, and basically and you become more toxic, and it's like a vicious circle. Basically, exercise, any mode of exercise, 
if you done if you do it properly and in moderation and appropriately, then it will give you a body resonance and it will increase your libido. Why does it increase your libido? It separates red blood cells. So it's like a normal Viagra. What does Viagra do? It's, it's a blood thinner, right? So you, here, you do it naturally. You don't need the Viagra. You separate the red blood cells, therefore your libido is increased. And that's 1,290 subjects, a study that we've been doing for a very, very long time with microscope. How does he, uh, this, it's, it's, a, it's a different thing that we invented, and how was it invented? It's uh, seven several waypoints that are put uh, together, one on top of the other, when you build a house or, or a structure or a, or a person, if you like. And basically, there is a specific formula that you put them together and you make a signal, a signal that has been built over 47 years of research by the co-inventor of the first phase measure, Jerry Powell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it, the the uh, signal has to be only compatible with the motor nerve, otherwise it's going to be discarded. So this is uh, how it's made. I won't talk very much. This is uh, the resonance that is made, a microscope that is used. I'm going very slight. Um, this is how resonance uh, reinstates neural communications. This is under the microscope that you can see. Uh, more articles, and uh, there is a variable that you can measure it. The experience is like basically working out in the gym, or like uh, horse riding, and this is a book that basically shows experimental evidence connecting immune integrity with health, enhancement and diminution of the COVID-19 infection. That has been translated in eight different languages. I just uh, published it. Thank you very much. Uh, I will conclude. And if you need, thank you very much. Um, you can contact me at science at ielios.com. I'll answer all your questions. Thank you. Okay. We will have Q and A for you after this session. Okay. For the last speaker, is Dr. Anisha from India. Right. Her lecture is about aging neck in the time of reaching